you very much. Let me begin by thanking the Almighty God for protecting and preserving all of us to be able to see this day and to pray to Him to continue to protect and preserve us so that on 7th December we can exercise our franchise and vote to change the trajectory of our country Ghana and make the lives of our people better. On this occasion, I'd like to thank all our supporters, our sympathizers, our foot soldiers, our activists for the strong work that you do to keep our party strong and vibrant. On this occasion, I remember one of our foot soldiers called Wasiu. Wasiu would have been here with us. We call him popularly Aponche. For those of you who are in Asin North, he is the one who, when there was pressure, he took a cement block and raised it and fought for NDC. Today he's not with us. May Allah grant him peaceful rest. Ghana is at an important juncture in its history. And the decision that we make on 7 December is going to reflect on the future of this country. A member of the New Patriotic Party, a friend of mine and a former colleague MP, said, he said, it's not Ghana that needs change. He says, it's change that needs Ghana. Change is calling Ghana. And that's Kennedy, Honorable Kennedy in Japan. Change needs Ghana because in the last Afrobarometer survey, more than 80% of Ghanaians said that our country is going in the wrong direction. And if you are going in the wrong direction, if you are walking or you are driving and you are going in the wrong direction, what do you do? You change your course. And that is why on 7 December, Ghana must change course. We cannot solve the crisis in which we are with the same people who caused the crisis in the first place. Several years ago, somebody came and said, try me. Monsoon Menshe, the result is what we are seeing today. Today another person has come, and he's also saying, try me. And he's saying the same things the one who has helped to put us in this ditch was saying eight years ago. And what they say is that, if after four years I don't do well, change me. The youth of this country don't have four years to waste. The youth of this country are in a hurry to create the opportunities that will make them live a dignified life. They are not going to try somebody and after four years decide whether you should continue. The youth of this country want an experienced hand they want a safe pair of hands. They want a hand that they have seen do it before to come back and take this country and rescue us from the mess in which we have been dumped by the Akufado Baumia government. My brothers and sisters, it is not going to be easy. The more I look at the figures, the more I look at our situation, it is even worse than what this government is telling us. It's going to take a lot of hard work. And as has been said, one person alone cannot do it. We would need the cooperation of the whole country to be able to lift Ghana back on its feet again. I've been out of government for almost eight years now. I did my best. I wouldn't say things were perfect. 
but at least we're making progress. What I can promise you is that I will be truthful to you. I will never tell you lies. I will never tell you things that I can't do. The, pro the problem with this country is that our policies are based on the short cycle of winning elections every four years. And we are not creating the foundation for this economy to take off. And so, we are not making you promises. I'm promising you that I'll work hard day and night to make sure that we reset the fortunes of this country. Four years of a good leader will make more impact than eight years of a dishonest leader. It's not about how long you serve, it is about how well you serve. It's not about eight years or four years, it is about hard work, it is about truth, it is about trust, and it is about doing the things that will create a future for our young people. And that is why the NDC is calling on you on 7 December to do your duty to your God and country so that we can turn this nation around. This government is living in an illusion. They are living in a dream world. They are living in a fantasy world. Because if you are not living in an illusion, when people are hungry, how can you tell them they are satisfied? Puma and Denenyale. And Denenyale. Kakum Malma. Kakanti Yelma and Tanya. Denen. We can feel the pangs of hunger. And yet this government tells us we are satisfied. And that never in Akufado's government have people gone hungry. Meanwhile, the statistics clearly show that 8 million of our citizens last year in 2023 went 24 hours without food because they couldn't afford to buy food. Meanwhile, the statistics tell us that almost 2 million of our young people are sitting at home, they are not in school, they are not in education, they are not in training, and they are not in employment. They are just sitting at home idle. And most of them are still living in their parents' houses because they don't have an income to be able to start a life of their own. The statistics tell us that in, uh, uh, unemployment has risen from just above 8% in 2016 to 14.7%. And yet, they say things have never been this better. And they have the audacity to compare themselves to our first president, Osajufo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. How can you compare this useless government that has led Ghana into such crisis to the government of Kwame Nkrumah? The statistics again tell us that things are not well with this country. All the statistics. For a government that said it was going to come with an economic wizard, an economic guru, and that is the reason why he was being brought to stabilize the economy and stabilize the currency. To take the CD from four CDs to 16 CDs and tell us that clap for us, we've done well. If such a government is not living in an illusion, what else is an illusion? For a government that has taken inflation as far as 54% and it is currently still above 20%, 
to tell us that we should clap for them because they've done well. If they are not living in an illusion, then I don't know what an illusion is. But that is the beauty of democracy. It gives us the opportunity every four years to make a change. And the time has come for us to make that change. The time has come for us to reset Ghana. And I believe that four years is enough to do the reset of Ghana. We will reset this country so that future generations can come and build on that foundation. Our intention is to ameliorate the damage that has been done. We all saw what happened in the banking sector clean out. The indigenous capital of Ghanaians in our banking sector was wiped away with one very reckless decision. And so today, most of our people who are working in the banking sector for these banks are today unemployed, and I'm sure there are some of them here. Today, some of them are Uber drivers, some are bakers, some are even uh, driving Aboboya and Mahama Kambu. The time has come for us to make a change. And I've said when we come, we will restore for those who unjustifiably had their banking licenses withdrawn, we shall restore their licenses to them. So that we can create more employment for our people. The debt restructuring has given people haircuts, and that's what Nana was talking about. Today, the savings of our middle class has been eroded because of the debt restructuring. Our pensioners, and I'm sure there are some of the pensioners here, your provident fund that you use to buy bonds and other things in order that when you go on pension, you'll be able to buy your medication and be able to look at, after yourself. Today, this government has endangered your future. Many might not live long because they cannot, get, they cannot afford to buy medicines. And this government does not deserve one day longer. But our constitution says they still have five months to go. But come December, we must take the decision that will change the trajectory of our country. The world is waiting for a signal. Ghana is waiting for a signal. Investors are all holding on because they want to see what will happen in Ghana. We must take a decision on 7 December that shows the world that we are serious people. And that we know that our country needs a turn around. And so 7 December, let us all make sure we come out in our numbers and we vote so that we move this government out. Let us not lose hope. Let us have hope, because I can assure you that the next NDC government is a government that will restore hope and create opportunities for our young people. NDC has the men and the women, and it's not like what the MPP said, we have the men, and we didn't know they were area boys. NDC has capable men and women who are capable of turning our fortunes around. And our first priority is going to be job creation, so that we can create jobs for the teeming youth of this country. And that is why I'm proposing the 24-hour economic policy. The policy is going to be linked with aggressive food production and modernization of our agriculture. And that's why I'm saying in every district we're going to create a farmer service centers. We will bring the tractors, the planters, the plows, the seeds, the fertilizer. And if you're a farmer, you must register with the center. And at the beginning of the farming season, we'll give you all the inputs that you need so that you can produce your crops. And when you have sold your crops, you come back and pay for the inputs that you have been given. The 24-hour economy 
is going to be linked to an accelerated export development program. We are going to create agro-processing zones and we are going to create a new class of agri-business agri people. And so all you young people will be encouraged to go into agro-processing. You can buy the food off the farmers, you can process it, package it nicely, either for domestic consumption or for export. And there's going to be an accelerated uh, uh, export development program of which I, the President, will be the chairman to make sure that we increase the exports of Ghana. Ghana has the human resources to turn our nation around. Ghanaians are capable. Ghanaians are capable. They need the right leadership. They need a selfless leadership. And that is why I'm saying that governance is going to be a key platform of the new government. One of the things we will continue is the work Professor Tamil started of reviewing the 1992 constitution and amending it so that it will be a living document that guides our country into the future. We will continue the constitutional review to amend the various sectors that are holding us back. We know that the vast majority of our people want our district chief executives to be elected so that they can hold them accountable. We will look at the work the Constitutional Review Committee did and I think that in four years we can forge the consensus that will amend the Constitution and make it a better document for us. Another aspect of governance will be to strengthen the institutions. We are going to work with the judiciary. We are going to work with parliaments so that we can strengthen these institutions in order that they can be the bulwark of our democracy. But of course, the most important issue in governance is the fight against corruption and accountability. If you don't want to be accountable, go and do your own business. Whatever you do in your business, nobody is coming to hold you to account because it is your own investment. But if you decide that you want to come into public service, then prepared, be prepared to be held accountable. And so I've said it and I'll say it again. For those people who have been involved in scandals and various acts of misappropriation in this government, this MPP government, we shall investigate you and we will let the law take its course. We will hold everybody to account. And if you have abused your public trust, the people of Ghana will exact the uh, sanction that is required. But I serve notice too that our country is at a pivotal point. This is our last opportunity. If you read the Afro Barometer survey, you will find that trust in democracy is at its lowest in our history. And this is our last opportunity to salvage our democracy. So it is not going to be business as usual. For those who wish to serve in the new administration, know that you are coming to serve in an administration of modesty. You are coming to serve in an administration of honesty. You are coming to serve in an administration of hard work and you are coming to serve in an administration of accountability. And so as we hold the previous government accountable for wrongdoings, if you serve in the John Mahama government, the next John Mahama government, if you are accused of wrongdoing, you will also be punished and held accountable. Because it is going to be as they say in their Khan language, Aba Yadibo Techino, Enwa En Yadibo Bang. And so, if you want to serve in this administration, you must be prepared to be accountable. 
They are, uh, we are going to launch our manifesto next month in August, before the end of August. And we are launching it in Central Region. So Central Region, when you go back, start preparing. We are coming to launch the manifesto. And when we launch the manifesto, there are a lot of interesting things there. We will spell out the blueprint that we intend to pursue to change the fortunes of our country. But let me just mention a few, and I think none are not dead. Our women are the majority of our population. And our women dominate the commerce, trade, agriculture, agro-processing uh, uh, sectors of our economy. And yet sometimes, our mothers and our sisters need just a thousand Ghana cities to be able to use as capital for their business, and they are not able to get it. And that is why, as Nana said, we are going to set up a National Women's Bank. It is going to have its branches in the markets, in all the places that women do business. Your bank, your women's bank is going to be there. And it will be responsible for giving you small credit so that you can grow your businesses and be able to look after 